What's up everybody, Michael Silva here. You're watching episode four of Quick Tips. Where I give you just the tip. Quick Tips is the series where I cut out all the fluff and give you just the tip. In today's episode, I'm bringing you into the Weeble desktop software and we're going to create a new board from scratch. I'm going to show you the exact trading setup I use and how I set it up. I'm going to include indicators, how to group everything, where I place my charts, etc, etc. Now today's quick tip is a little bit longer than usual, so I'm giving you a little bit longer of a tip. Let's go ahead and hop into today's episode. What's up, everybody? We are here in the Weeble desktop software. I'm going to walk you through how I create my board. This is where I execute my trades. I'm going to show you exactly what my desktop looks like as I execute those trades so you can trade just like me. So what we're first going to do is go ahead and hit the trade tab here on the Weeble desktop software. And it's going to open up a page that somewhat looks like this. If you already have elements in here, then what we're going to do is create a new board by clicking the plus sign up to the top right. Go ahead and click that. And it's going to bring open this page. You're going to have some default, like a normal one, a multi-trade setup. Go ahead and click blank. Once we're here at the blank setup, we want to go ahead and click the widget tabs, which is right up here to the top right. This will allow us to add elements into this board and save it later so we can trade on it. So go ahead and click widgets. The widget's going to have two separate tabs, the general and the stock. We will be using both of these today to add in elements. So but let's go ahead and click chart, then hit the X to get out of that. It's going to break open up a chart for us to use. Now the chart is what I use to read the technicals. And what I'm going to do is bring it to the top right here and then just I'm going to make it bigger. I like seeing a big chart while I'm trading. Now we'll add in the elements that I use as far as indicators go later. What we're doing right now is just setting up the entire board so you can get an idea as what I see when I am trading. Next we're going to add in the positions and the orders. So go ahead and click the widget settings. Make sure you're on the general tab and go ahead and click positions and then orders or orders. We're going to go ahead and put to the to the left side right here. And then the position we're going to go ahead and put below the chart and stretch it out to match up the bottom area of the chart. Now we can adjust this later as time goes. And my orders are going to be just right here. You know, we'll, we'll actually get this set up a little bit later, but we're just going to have that right there for right now. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is add in account details and watch list. So go ahead and click account details and watch list. And we're gonna go ahead and drag these to the top left. So my account details I like to put over here. Now, this is a brand new setup. So everything here, you can hit this plus, you can hit this eyeball sign so it hides it. If you hit that, it'll open up all your information as far as your account value and so forth. I created a new account on Webull because I want to start it fresh here. So what I do is I keep that here at the top left and then I move my watch list right below it. So that means I'm going to have like all the stocks that I'm keeping an eye on just right here on the left side alongside my account balances. Now the next thing that we need to add in is the way that we're going to execute the trades. So we're going to go ahead and click the widget tab, stock and trade. Once you've done that, go ahead and click and drag right here to the left side of your chart. Now, what we have so far is the setup where we can now buy, sell. Um, you can choose your order type and how much quantity you'd like to choose from. And then we also have right below that where it's going to show you if the order is working, if it's filled, if it's if it's not filled, if you have a stop loss right here. And then the position is going to show you your active positions. So if you're actually in a trade, it'll be listed on this right below the chart. The next thing that I'm going to add is the time and sales. So go ahead and click widget, stock, time and sales. Now, if you are subscribing to NASDAQ Total View, I believe it's 25 bucks a month, and that'll give you the level two data. Now, I don't have level two data on Webull. I just use the time and sales, but I do have Thinkorswim platform on a separate laptop with the level two data available. I do plan on doing the NASDAQ Total View, Total View here in the near future. I just have not pulled the trigger on that. I just wanted to make you aware. So go ahead and click time and sales. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag that right here next to the orders. I'm gonna go ahead and work my uh, move my working tab up just a little bit so it's close together. 
So now it's looking quite just like this. We're almost there. I'm gonna add in one more element and then we're gonna kind of hone everything back together. The next element I wanna add is one more chart. To add another chart, it's gonna look like this. Go ahead and click the widget settings, stock, chart. Okay, we're gonna take that chart and we're gonna move it down here to the bottom left. And I'm just gonna go ahead and expand it to the length of my desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and move my watch list maybe just a little bit. I'm gonna probably make this just a, sm a little bit smidge smaller too, just so I can extend that chart up because this is an important chart to me. Okay, now that we have all of this set up, the next element that we're gonna be doing is we're going to group what we need to group together. And by a group, I mean, if I type in TSLA right here, I want it to open up over here on the chart. Or if I open up, you know, Boeing, I need it to open up on the order list right here so I can place the order. Instead of having to go type in here and then type in there and then type in here to show me what exactly is that I'm looking at. So in order to group it, we're going to go ahead and click this little tiny minus sign up here on all of these different settings. And we're going to group it as group one. So go ahead and click set as group and go to group one. Minus sign, group one at the chart we're gonna go ahead and go set as group one. And then we're gonna go ahead and go here to the orders, group one, positions, group one. All right, so notice how I left this chart to stay here. That's because I want to be able to pull up a different stock on this chart. And I'll tell you what that chart is here soon. Okay, so now if I wanna pull open a chart, for example, Boeing, I'll click it and it's gonna be able to load my Boeing right here on the on the order list so I can go ahead and put in a market order or whatever the case may be and then it's also going to bring it up on time and sales so I can see the time and sales which is basically the tape and then it's going to also show me any orders that are here positions and so forth so we're almost there now if I go ahead and click over here on this chart this is the one I use to track the spy and I usually have it on the five minute time frame. So the SPY, I always keep an eye on it to give me a good sense as to where the market is moving. So that is what this chart is here. Now you can organize this to make it a look a little bit cleaner, which I did just here. And you know, everyone's desktop is a different size for the most part. So make it work for you and how you like to do it. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just, in order to fill the screen up, notice how there's a big gap right here. What I'll do is I'll just maybe move this over just a little bit more, and then I'll go ahead and expand my chart. I like seeing a nice, big, clear chart while I'm trading. So there you go. Now I have all the elements within it, and there's no open spaces. I really like how this setup is taking place, but now the next step is to add in the indicators. So in order to add indicators, at least the ones that I use, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, on the chart, there is some lines right here. So go ahead and click, the indicators button and indicators is going to open up and have a bunch of different options now your frequently used might be different than mine's right so keep that in mind it might not show here but i'm going to go ahead and click the macd the vwap and the moving averages now a bunch of stuff is going to pop up and we'll adjust these as we need okay and you don't need to use all these or you might want to use a different one you can play around with this we're just showing you what i use so now that all those are clicked, if they didn't show up here, you can go to all indicators, scroll over to the left, and then you could scroll through this list to click the moving averages, the VWAP, and then the sub chart is where you'll find the MACD and other popular indicators such as stochastics or the RSI. Now that we have all the indicators in place, let's go ahead and adjust their settings. Now here at the top left of the chart, you're gonna notice the MA and some different moving averages. Yours might not have all of these that I have, but we're gonna go ahead and set it up so you can have the same ones that I have. There's a settings button right here to the left of it, so go ahead and click that. Make sure that you click moving averages and you can see the settings of the moving averages right here. Notice the settings. I'm gonna go ahead and do the 50, the 200, the 20, and the eight. Now, as far as these lengths go after that, you can just make those one, it doesn't matter. But the reason why I want these is I think the 50 and the 200 are good indicators to watch the context of the chart, okay? And it also shows good support and resistance areas 
to as well. But mostly, these are the godfather moving averages. I usually keep them on my chart at all times. The 20 period moving average is a really good moving average to understand when a trend changes. So I like to have that one there as well. The eight period moving average I like to have for shorting. It's more an aggressive moving average. It's a shorter time frame. And when I'm shorting a stock, I like to follow that and use that as sometimes a stop loss area. So I'm going to go ahead and keep, keep the eight period moving average on there as well. Now that was on the inputs tab. If you go ahead and click style, what I do is I make the 50 blue. So you can go ahead and boom and make it blue or your shade of however you'd like it. The 200 period moving average, I like to make a pink and or purple. The 20 period moving average is the yellow brick road. So I like to keep it yellow. And then the eight period moving average, I like to have as orange. Notice how these four boxes are checked. If I uncheck them, they fall off the screen. Make sure that these two down here, the one and the one are unchecked so they're not on your screen. Go ahead and click done. This green line down here is the VWAP. Now, if you're on the daily time frame as of right now, it's not going to show the VWAP. It's only on charts that are the lower time frames. All right, so there you have it. We have all the moving averages set up that I use. Sometimes I like to remove them from the screen to just declutter stuff, but I, I typically, for the most part, keep those moving averages and the MACD up. The MACD settings, if you go ahead and click settings, these are the default settings where it goes 12, 26, 9. I keep these as is, so just go ahead and make sure that they're the same. You can hit done. Or if your colors are different, red and green, you can go ahead and make it so it is the fast to slow, MACD is green, and then the signal line is red. Go ahead and click done. And there you have it. We went ahead and adjusted the chart how I use mine. We have the MACD, we have the positions. This is exactly what I use to do live day trading on Webull. This is what you're watching when I'm doing my trades. However, when I do the trades, I just chop out the screen and the orders. Now, the reason I do that is just so you can see a more clear picture. I might adjust it as time goes by, but this is what I'm using here at this current moment. Now on this chart down here, you're gonna have to go ahead and add in the settings as well by doing the same exact thing that we did over here. So you can click indicators, you can add in the MACD, the VWAP, and so forth. And then you have the same setup for, the, for this down here on the SPY. Now the reason once again why I like using the SPY is it because it does act as a good leading indicator potentially as to where a price might go. Actually, in one of my videos, live trading videos today, I was mapping out the Boeing trade and as the price was moving up on SPY, Boeing was moving down. And I kind of saw that as a leading indicator that Boeing might break out. And if you're looking at the Boeing stock here, this is a great example. It was moving up here and it was going down at this time on Boeing. So the market was moving up while Boeing was moving down. So I figured potentially that we might see a breakout and that's exactly what we got here at this particular time. That is why I use the SPY as a leading indicator. Now, if you're completely unfamiliar with how to use Webull software, trust me, I understand that this can all look confusing at times, but this is the basic setup that I use. It is nothing complex. I am a very simple minded trader. I like to keep things very simple. I use simple brokerage such as Webull to do my trades. Up here on the top of the chart, you can hop into different time frames, five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour, two hour, four hour, the daily, okay? And you can also add things to your watch list as time goes. Oops, I just realized that I didn't set this as a group, so go ahead and set that as a group one if you haven't done so already. Now, the last and final thing we need to do is to save this board because if you were to log in on the Webull desktop software on another computer or maybe your computer crashed, so forth, you need to be able to save this so you can reopen it up every day and use it again. So go ahead and scroll to the or top right of the screen where this floppy disk is and hit save as a board. You're gonna go ahead and name that board, whatever you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and name it Mike's Setup. And then go ahead and click save. And there you have it. Now you have a board that has been saved. So. How do you access this board? Maybe if you were to go to another computer. Well, if you go ahead and exit, 
these two boards. It's going to be right here as Mike's setup. And you'll notice that you still have a blank board here that you can set up, the normal, the multi trades. And then go ahead and click Mike's setup. And then boom, there you have it. The setup is back. You have your charts, you have all the elements, and you are ready to trade. All right, everybody, that's all I have for you on today's quick tip. Hope this helps. If you guys have any suggestions for the quick tips, I've been getting a few. Go ahead and leave them in the comment section below because it gives me a good idea as to what you guys need to become more successful, better traders. Hope all is well. Have a good day. See you later.